and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be Fifty-nine sounds good to me. Leaning on the everlasting arms. I don't sing. Hey. I don't think we sing that song a whole lot around here, but it's a beautiful song. What a fellowship!
Mike is on the piano, yellow. <laughs> I was in prison. Locked up in chains, sin held me captive with sorrow and pain. Tears of frustration as love passed me by until the master heard my heart's cry for grace. pardon and make me whole for grace marvelous grace flows from above with infinite love marvelous grace I was downhearted broken inside praying for mercy with nowhere to hide but there was a solace searching for me grace overflowing set my soul free and grace grace God's grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace, grace, in God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sinful grace, marvelous grace, I needed grace to pardon and make With infinite love, marvelous grace flows from above. With infinite love, marvelous morning because I got into my message, but again, uh, this week, starting starting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, actually you can get out there around 6 and eat supper. We're going to have supper out at each each night out at the land, out there at the pavilion, uh, 2100 uh, uh, Strickland Drive, if you put that in your GPS, it'll get you there. Uh, we'll get one bill, it's uh, 2089, and then the water department said it's 2100, so I don't know where we are, but anyway. It'll get you there every night, 7 o'clock, preaching. Uh, Manchester, Jeff uh, Bailey will be there Monday night. Bill Adams from Spring uh, Hill will be there Tuesday night. And we'll be feeding everybody. This church will be feeding everybody. First, the first night, Victory Feeds. We feed Tuesday night. I don't know the rest of the schedule there. But I know that uh, uh, Dusty Ray from out here, uh, Heartland will be preaching Wednesday night, and we're taking our services out there. We're not going to have services here. We're not going to have the Borough Club either, okay? So we're going to be going out there on Wednesday night. 
Now, Thursday night, Danny Mayo for Bethel, uh, we sent Danny out of the church to start. Matter of fact, he started at the pavilion. Y'all remember that. I got him to go out there in the summer and start preaching, drew a crowd, started getting some folk in. They moved in the winter. They moved over to the Good Shepherd's home gym over there. So they uh, they kind of taken that over. Uh, but then again, that's where he'll, he'll be preaching. Then uh, Friday night, uh, Randy Crawls will be preaching, okay? Every night. They'll feed you, we'll feed you every night. I don't know what they're having. I know what we're having. I don't know what they're having any other night, but uh, I know what we're having. And you're going to like it. You're going to like it. We catered it in from Sylvan Park. It's fried chicken. It's uh, country fried steak. It's mashed potatoes, green beans, corn, rolls. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm getting spiritual. I ain't got to start preaching yet. Wow. <laughs> Holy Ghost moving around here, I tell you. <laughs> but, uh, but hey, hey. We're going to have all that and more and then some desserts out of this world. Desserts out of this world. As a matter of fact, Sylvan Park always, when we cater, they cater for us, they throw in a banana pudding. And she said, we're throwing in two big banana puddings for you. Make a tremendous banana pudding if you haven't eaten it. Now, we've got the ladies, all, men all lined up for that. We're in charge of parking out there all week long. Brother David is going to take care of that. He and Grant for us and line up men who can help do that. Some of you men can be there. Patrick, Alex, you got to get there late. I know you had to park out on the street somewhere, but anyway. But anyway, uh, you there? We're feeding 150 people. We've had that thing packed out. That tent meeting. How many of you ever been to a tent meeting? Amen. I remember. Miss Alice remembers those days over in Westview. Kitty, Gail, many of them remember those days over in Westview when. Uh, what's wrong? They're not working. What are you doing that for? Oh, you were there? I don't remember. Do you ever remember seeing him there? I don't remember. Do you remember Gail? I don't remember seeing him. <laughs> I don't remember seeing him there. But anyway, hey, we, I love tent meetings. I love for sharp meetings. Uh, and I'm in, uh, I'm in First John. Where are y'all? <laughs> we're staying in First Corinthians. Okay, First Corinthians 2. Going to start in verse 14. Uh, I want to preach... Uh, you know, we, we want to place people in categories. Uh, we label people. We label them according to their economic, uh, uh, economics. We could label them for education. We label them for careers. We even label them uh, for, the, uh, for what, hey, how they dress. I was in a meeting one time when a guy walked in. He had on about a $1,000 suit. Boy, everybody, whoa, look at, this, look at this guy. He must be rich. No, he's probably in debt. But anyway, hey, he, we, we do that. Well, the Bible, the Bible places men in categories as well. Uh, it, it categories, it, it, it groups them, excuse me, into three categories. The natural man, the spiritual man, and the carnal man. I want you to look at those tonight. Because everyone in this building tonight falls into one of those categories. Okay? The prime purpose of the Bible is that God desires to reveal himself uh, and to fallen man so that he might have a relationship with them, okay? He desires that men will come to him, to the knowledge of him through the Son, Jesus Christ, okay? And that after that, they, after they're saved, listen to this, now after they're saved, they'll grow up in him and into a mature Christian. Sadly, not everyone is saved. And sadly, not every saved person grows up in Christ. Now, the Bible offers a plan for growing up. However, you must know, you kind of must know where you are before you can, can go any further. So we're going to see if we can find out where we are tonight. And my message, and this, I desire for out of this message to help you see uh, which of these three categories you're in. Okay? Notice with me that, that, hey, as we go down this road, as we travel down this road to maturity, uh, listen up, okay? So let's get started. I want to preach on why don't you just grow up? Why don't you just grow up? Let's pray, okay? Father, we approach your throne again tonight. We thank you that we can. What a privilege it is to be able to step into the throne room. Lord, I ask you now just to help me. But I ask you to help the hearer as well. We might need to, we might need to examine ourselves to see where we are. I don't I don't think there's anyone, I pray there's not anybody in this room that's a natural man. I pray that all of them are spiritual. But there could be some carnal here as well. 
Let us, let us understand, let us recognize where we are. You help us now. And we'll thank you for it. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's read the scriptures, if you will. I'm in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the... Uh, hey, look here. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritually judged all things, yet... Yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may in, in, instruct him? But, hey, look here. But he has, but he, but we have the mind of Christ. Now look here. Chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I... Did you notice that? He said, but I, brethren, he's speaking to Christians. So the carnal man is probably saved. We're not going to jump ahead of ourselves, but the carnal man is, is saved. But he just ain't grown up. He's gone nowhere with it. He's gone nowhere with it. Let's go back to verse 14 in chapter 2 and get started. The natural man. The natural man. He lives naturally. He's depraved. Psalm, Psalms 58, 3, 3, hey, 3 says this. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as, hey, as soon as they are, hey, as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Those little babies that you see that you love, you love to hold. Hey, hey, they're lost. They're lost. Now, we know there are some denominations, if you call it that, that will, hey, will baby baptisms, okay? Thinking that that's going to keep them, okay? And save them. That don't work. There's only one way, and we know that. In John, it tells us, that, "Hey, he's the he's the he's the way." Lord Jesus Christ is the way. John eight forty four a says, "Ye are the hey of your father the devil, and the hey and the lust of your father ye will do." Hey, he was a murderer, uh, being hey, from the beginning, and uh, abode not in the truth. The natural man is prone to sin. There, 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 he, he bends that way. His nature bends toward evil. Romans, 10, uh, Romans 3, 10, 12 says, That is written, there is none. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that, that understandeth. There is none that, that seeketh after God. When I was lost, I didn't seek after God. God came knocking on me. He came knocking on my door. And I'm thankful he did. I'm thankful he did. I was 29 years old. I'd been out in sin. I'd been, hey, I'd been in Vietnam War. I could have died there. By the time I had I died there, I'd gone straight to hell. I look back on it now and tremble. I look back now and tremble. Some of the things I did at 16, 17, 18 years old. Left Murfreesboro one night to, to go to Franklin, down the old Franklin Highway. I was there in 22 minutes. We leaped through, we leaped through Triune. The car actually went airborne. It looked like, looked like the evil Knievel. Okay. I could have died at that age and gone to hell. God's been merciful. God's been good to me. God's been long-suffering to me. I wouldn't have put up with me that long. I wouldn't have put up with me that long. But he did because he, he saw something down the tunnel of time. He, he, he knew that this was going to happen one day, that I'd stand in this pulpit. I never, I never imagined that. Many of my friends, many of my classmates still, they, they still just kind of cringe when I tell them what I'm doing. I say, I'm a preacher. They go, ooh, you're a preacher? Wow. Scares them to death. But I'm not that same man. If you're saved tonight, neither are you. You're not the same person you were. Okay? You're, you're a new preacher now. You're changed. Your life has changed. Thank God it has. Look here in Ephesians, in Ephesians 2, 1, 3, uh, he, he's, he is directed. By that I mean, I mean that the natural man's life is out of his hands. Let me read to you uh, Ephesians 2, 1, 3. And, hey, and ye hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That was me, that was you, that was us. Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the powers of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the 
children of disobedience, among whom also we all, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were, of nature, hey, were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That's where we used to be. If you're, if you're saved tonight, you're not there any longer. But that's where I used to be. That's where you used to be. That was us. He quickened us. He brought us out of the Mari pit. He set us on a solid rock, okay? See, the natural man, he's under the control of Satan. And, and like a mindless puppet, okay? He, he carries out every, every little thing that the flesh and the devil want him to do. See, I thought that was a big thing. I, I already had my plans on Friday night where I was going to be doing. Even at 18, you know, 17, I, I planned my day, my, my weekend out. We go back to, up to, uh, to John uh, 8, 44, the B part there. It says, when, hey, when, he speaketh, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. And the truth, hey, and the truth ain't in him for real. He's a true, hey, he's a, he's a liar and the father of it. You can't believe anything the devil sells you. Look what happened to Eve. Look, where, look, look why we're where we are today. Because she believed what the devil said. And you can believe that too. And you can go way off course. You can get, you can get way out in, in yonder land, okay? Not only is he direct, he, he's, hey, he's in darkness. 2 Corinthians, we're right here at If you want to turn over that way, or you don't have to, I'll read it to you. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, In whom the God of this, the little g God, of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of Christ, should shine unto them. Hey, he's that great light. He, he, I think of Nicodemus over in John, when he came at night to the, to the Lord Jesus. He was a teacher, y'all. He was a teacher among the Jews. But he, he was in deep darkness. He was a lost man. Can you imagine what we're going through today with these false prophets, these false teachers, these false preachers today? They're sending people to hell. They're sending people to hell. We need, we need to be out here doing what we did Saturday, knocking on doors, getting the gospel to people. We need to draw people in here so we can give them the gospel. We need to do that. It's vital. It's vital for the sake of their soul. The, the, the natural man does not see the problem. It says it's foolishness to him. Nor does he understand the things of God. See, so receive it. That means to welcome. He may, he may appreciate some of, the, some of the things about the church and worship. I get often, I get lost people who tell me all the time, well, I sure, I sure admire what you do. I, you know, I, I, I pray for you. I think, whoa, whoa. They know better. Hey, they know better, but they just can't get there because it's foolishness to them. They can't understand it. Spiritual things are foolish. Pure, that's pure foolishness to them. Uh, we're right here at it, First Corinthians. Uh, let's go back, First Corinthians one, real quick. In verse 18, it says, For the preaching of the cross to them that, that, hey, perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. It says that the preaching is just foolishness to them. They, 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 they can't understand. They can't comprehend it. For years, I probably couldn't comprehend it. I was raised up in a church that preached. I mean, they preached hellfire and damnation. They, they, they rattled your cage. When you went there, you heard preaching, the kind I like. Yet it didn't, it didn't penetrate my heart. I didn't get there. Oh, I knew, I, I, I knew there was a God. I knew there was a Jesus. I knew those. I had, a, I had a head knowledge, but I had no heart knowledge. And I really didn't want any because <laughs> it was foolishness to me. I was going to have to give up all those good things I had going, all those good times I had. I had to give all that up. And that was that was that was impossible for me at that time. I didn't have a problem. With, I didn't have a problem with it on February the seventeenth, nineteen seventy four. Though I dropped it down, and I said, "Uh, uh-uh, I don't need this any longer." 
See, the, the, the natural man, he doesn't understand uh, people of God. And, and he'll criticize them. He'll mock them. He'll do a lot of things to, 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 to try to even embarrass them. I have people who try to embarrass me at times. I'll have people in, uh, that, hey, I was ran with back in the 60s. And they'll want to bring up something in the 60s. And something I did. Well, you remember when you done? I said, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't remember that. Because you know why? God don't remember it. God don't remember it. Hey, it's as far as east as from west. It's, uh, they want to criticize. They're like a... They're like a a, 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 a deaf man criticizing the music. They're like a blind man ridiculing the art. Hey, the, the, the natural man's in darkness, y'all. But you know Jesus can change all that. Over in John 9, 25 says, He answered and said, Hey, whether he be a, a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know. That whereas I was blind, now I see. He touched the blind man and healed him. He can touch you and heal you of your sin nature. The natural man's doomed. He's doomed. Hell, hell is his certain, is certainly his future. And that's sad. That's, that, should, that, should, that should motivate us. That should challenge us to get out. I mean, you've got probably family. I have family members that are on their way to hell. Uh, any occasion I get, I talk to them about Jesus. I talk to them about church. I talk to them. But again, it's foolishness to them. But if you can get the ear of the lost man, you ought to do it because he's doomed. Psalms 9, 17 says, The wicked shall hey, be turned into hell. And all the nations uh, that, forgot, hey, that, hey, that forget God are going to be turned into hell. Born once, die twice. Born once, die twice. He's dead. The natural man's dead. He lives and breathes, yes. The natural man, hey, he, 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 he's headed for a state of death. You say, what is death? Best illustration or best description I can give of death is a car without a battery in it. If you want to go electric when you'd be in real trouble, okay? A car without a battery in it, that's dead. I've had, how many of you have your car go dead? I mean, I've tried to crank and crank, and they won't do nothing. That's the natural man. He, he, he's headed for death. Two. Two deaths. Let's move on. Look at verses, uh, hey, 15 and 16. Uh, the spiritual man. The spiritual man. Okay? Uh, there, there's a vast difference between the natural man and the spiritual man. A vast difference. The spiritual man has been born, and he... he Hey, he got born twice. I've been born twice. You've been born twice. You had a brand new... Hey, what, what did Jesus tell Nicodemus? You must be born again. You got to be born again. That, 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 that's the key. That's the key. Hey, we who are spiritual, we're living, vibrant, personal... We have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? As a result, hey... He, he, has, he has given us a capacity to be different. People look at us and they may, I mean, I, every Sunday, I'm, even down in, in Florida, when we leave church and go to eat uh, a meal, down in Florida, no, I don't reckon anybody goes to church. I don't know. They do, they go into Bermuda Shorts. I reckon. But we go into a restaurant called uh, uh, Anna Maria uh, Oyster House. And we sit outside and eat. And, and people look at us when we walk up, and I'm in a suit, and Sherry's in her dress and all. They'd kind of look at you twice. Like, them funny, them people weird. Don't they know they're in Florida? They got to go naked down here? <laughs> <laughs> they got to wear their bathing, wear their underwear, it looks like, their bathing suit. Hey, yeah, they, 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 they look at us. We're different. And we're different because of what dwells inside of us. What dwells inside of us is the Holy Spirit, y'all. But now, hey, the spiritual man is able again to comprehend the spiritual things of God. That's the way it ought to be. If you turn again, 1 Corinthians 2, 
12 to 13. Okay? Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the, hey, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we spake, not in the, wor in the words which men wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Wow. We, we got the Holy Spirit. And, and, and you know what's so, so strange to me? We've all got the same one. We've all got the same Holy Spirit. My desires on Sunday evening is to be in church. My desire from my heart is to be in church on Sunday morning. My desire on Wednesday night to be in church. Ever since I got saved, uh, that, that, that never was a question in my mind. Two things never was a question in my mind when I first got saved. Now, I had some things I had to work on. I had to work on this filthy tongue I had. I had to work on some other things. But two things I never had to work on. Miss Alice, I'll be in church every time the door's open. Second, I'll tithe 10% of my income. Gross. Not net. Gross. I'll round up anything close. If I owe the Lord $151.30, I make it $152. Hello? I don't want to ever cheat God. I was sitting in, I was sitting in Cracker Barrel just uh, Friday. I think it's Friday or Thursday or Friday one, eating breakfast. And someone came over to me and said, where do you find that thing about having to give 10% of your income to the Lord? And I just jotted it down for him. I said, go read these. So there's no question in my mind. I have no question about it. Uh, God knows what I make. When that little, hey, when that little lady dropped him two mites in there, Brother Silas, where was, where was Jesus? He was looking in that. He was looking in that. I even do this. They're auditing me now, but <laughs> the IRS tells me I've had, I haven't had this in years. Joe came to me and said, your taxes are paid up for this year, and you're getting a refund. I said, Joe, I ain't never got no refund. You are this year. You overpaid. I said, okay, great. I haven't seen it yet. I've seen a couple of letters from the IRS saying we're reviewing your, <laughs> we're reviewing your, your tax return, <laughs> and I'm going yeah. <laughs> but you know when I get that check, I've been waiting to get it. I, I could never have gotten one in a long time. I'm going to tithe on it. I'm going to tithe on it. He said, "Well, you already paid tithe on that. It's called income. It's coming in. Maybe my money." Just being returned to me like a reimbursement, but it's it's going to go it's going it's going to go to the Lord. My tithe will go to the Lord on that. You may think different. That's up to you. But I just don't want to ever cheat God. I don't ever rob Him. Never will I rob God. See, the spiritual man, hey, he lives by the Spirit. The spiritual man lives his life governed governed by the rules of the Holy Spirit in his heart. He listens to his heart. I listen to my heart often because I know what my, hey, my, my, I've got a direct line to the Holy Spirit. And I listen. And when he says, don't do that, I don't do that. When he says, don't go there, I don't go there. When he says, say no to that, I say no to that. That's what we ought to do. See, Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light, hey, and a light unto my path. What is the Word of God? The Word of God. Brother Silas came in a moment ago and said something about, give it to me again, as a man said something about, well, man wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man wrote that. Well, actually, man wrote all this. But it was inspired by the Lord Jesus Christ. It was, the Lord gave them, God gave them that. It says so in the, in the Word of God. It tells us where that came from. So we, we got a lamp for our feet, we got a light for our path, and it's right here. And if we read it, uh, hey, our path would be a lot smoother. It'd be a lot smoother. 
See, the Spirit will lead us if we will allow it to. If we'll allow it to. Listen to John 16, hey, verse 13. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you, will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall, he shall hear, he shall speak, and he shall show you things to come. It was in Galatians this morning, Galatians 5, 16, this, is a, hey, this I say, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you'll just walk in the Spirit, if you'll listen to the Holy Spirit and, and that dwells in you, the same dwells in me and dwells in you. Let's listen to it, okay? Said, learn. The, the Spirit-filled man learns from the Spirit. The Spirit-filled man is able to receive the truths of the Word of God. He's able to, to grasp spiritual things. He can understand the Bible. He can enjoy the presence, the presence of the Lord. When we come in here, we got the Lord in here. We got, we got the presence of Him in here, okay? He, he, he's, he's here because you're here. He's here because we're here and, and, and assembled in this place. We're able to, 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 to spend time with him. That, that you won't spend time like that at home. I know there's people live, hey, on live stream tonight. They're at home sitting watching this in their comfy chair. It just ain't the same, though. We, we, we experience that. It's just not the same. I've not, I, I tell you. I, I, one pastor I know, he don't have live stream. He said, we never live stream. And we're not ever going to live stream. I kind of like that because, again, you know, we, we've created a monster somewhat. We've, create, we've, given them an, we've given them the excuse they want. Y'all remember that song? I don't remember who put it out. Excuses, excuses, they'll use them every time. They, 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 we gave them one. We gave them the very one they needed. God's truth is not foolishness to us, it's food to us. Job 23, hey, 12 says, Neither have I gone back from the, con the commandments of his lips. I have, <laughs> I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Feeding off of it. It's, it's nourishment to you. It, it, it's, it gives you what you need to make it through the day. When, when the treasure, hey, when the treasure house of God's word is open, uh, we, we gain a lot, and we grow a lot with it. This is what's going to grow you. We're preaching tonight on, why don't you just grow up? This will grow you. But if you keep it like that, thrown down on the, on the coffee table at home or the dinner table at home, and get it up on, hey, get it up on Sunday morning and come to church. And let the preacher read it to you. Better be in it. Better be in it daily. Better be hey, better be better be absorbing it. Better be eating it up. Eating it up. See the 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 spiritual filled man, he he's liberated by the spirit. The spirit hey, the spirit filled man is liberated from the bondage that he was in of the flesh. The world, the devil. See the flesh had me for twenty nine years. You say, well, you're still in the flesh. Yeah, I am, but I ain't going to let it have me. I'm not going to let it have me. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit have me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to listen to Him. I'm going to let God just, hey, speak to me through the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, not, it's not easy to squeeze. We don't be, we don't be put in, in the world's mold, y'all. We don't want to be there. And, it says, and be not conformed to this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. What about that? Your mind. I mentioned this morning. Uh, your thoughts. They're a sin. If you've got sinful thoughts, it's, it, that's a sin. And we think, oh, well, our thoughts. I even feel this way. I feel this way about it. There's many times I'm busy and somebody may call or share say, oh, somebody's in the hospital or somebody's going through this. This baby's having heart issues. This little Down syndrome, three week old baby or three month old, I can't remember. Baby is having a heart issue. Hey, that touches us. That's real close to home. We were so blessed with Katie. She knew, has never had a heart issue. But this little baby, three months old, was having a heart issue. I mean, I have time to stop and just pray, but the first thing I do, I start thinking about it. I start thinking about it. 
And in my thoughts, I may be working in something, maybe doing something, but in my thoughts, I'm thinking about That's praying to God. I'm praying to God. Because he knows my thoughts. He knows your thoughts. So you better watch your thoughts. Better watch your thoughts. See, the, the, the spiritual man literally possessed the mind of Christ in, in his daily life. He also, he always, he, he, wants, to, he wants to leave out and, 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 and just wipe out the world. He, he don't want all that going into his head and going into his life and going into his daily, daily walk. See, God, control, God controls the spirit-filled mind. He, the, the heart and the hands and the feet and the tongue and the flesh, everything is yielded to the control of the Spirit of the Lord. Nothing is held back from the Lord. Not with the Spirit-filled man. Not, not, not many folk ever, ever achieve this level of Christianity. Not many ever do that. But it should be their goal. It should be one of our goals that we would want to be just like the Spirit-filled man. That we want our lives to shine. We want our light to shine out here in the, in the dark community. This world's getting wicked, y'all. It's, it, it, hey, I, I told Sherry, I, I read something or saw something other than I said, do you really think, do you really think that that was going on in the days of Noah? Because it said just like the days of Noah. We're getting close to the end of this thing, y'all. This journey's just about over. Just about over. And it can be a sad thought when you think about your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, whatever, when you think about the lost family members you might have. It can be a really, a really sad time in our life. But we're, we're, we're nearing the end. It's coming to an end, y'all. And I know many of y'all, I did too, you say I've heard that for 60, 70, 80 years. We've heard it for a long time. But it said, in the, hey, as it was in the days of Noah, you think we're not there? My, my, the hardest thing for me to, to, to even find them in my mind is that you don't know what your gender is. That has been the killer for me. Since that came out, I'm like, what did you say? They put an X on your birth certificate? You don't know what you are? That's crazy, y'all. Animals know better. Animals know better. God gave them enough sense <laughs> to know better. Let's move on. Look in chapter 3 and verse 1 I read. The carnal man. That's where I come to preach. He lives unnaturally. This type of person, like I said, is probably saved. Yet mostly unchanged. Mostly unchanged. He has never grown in the Lord. He don't get into this right here. He doesn't, and he'll give you every excuse why he doesn't. Well, I just can't see it as well as he used to. Neither can I. Well, I, I just don't understand it. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting one in there NIV by... No, no, don't do it. I, I can't read the, the, all of them this and that and them and those and all that. Come on, come on. A fifth grader can read it. It's crazy. Don't give me that. Excuse. Hey, he, he thinks it's okay to just uh, have him a get out of hell free card. That's what he's got. He, 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 he finds, he'll find out different one day. When he stands in front of the Lord Jesus Christ, like I said, he's the same man. When he stands there in front of Jesus, hmm, and you say, well, you, you really think that he's going to be upset about me not going to church? Mm -hmm. I sure do. I mean, if I died for the church, I'd be upset you wouldn't, wouldn't appreciate it. Every time the doors open, I, I would say, hey, I, you know, I'm upset you're not there. I'm not pleased with that for you. What's your excuse? When you stand before the Lord face to face, you won't have one. You won't have one. You won't be able to make no excuses up there. Hey, this, this carnal man, he's, he's always defeated. 
the, the, the flesh has him. The devil has him. It's, it's, it's possible to be a Christian and still be carnal. Hello. One, he's, he's defeated. There are three areas where this carnality continues to show up. He can't, he, he can't walk spiritually. Constantly losing the battle of the flesh and the world and the devil. He's always wrapped in it somehow. He can't, he can't war, war spiritually. He isn't, he isn't able to, to dress up in the whole armor over in Ephesians 6, the whole armor of God. And let me tell you, you're going to need the whole armor of God whenever you step out into the, in, into the workplace, into the marketplace, into the, into the school, into where you're going to bet, you better have on the whole armor of God. You, you better realize how important it is. He, he's got, he may have some of the pieces, but he's got a lot of pieces missing. That way he can't fight evil. He, he's always beaten. The devil's going to beat him up. And he can't walk spiritually. This type of person, not much, uh, he's not much, old, again, on the Word of God. The carnal Christian, don't, he don't win souls. Probably don't carry a track in his pocket. Probably don't carry a track in his pocket. Doesn't have one. I mean, even when you go out to eat, just to lay it on the table. Maybe when you're in somewhere, just lay one down. I was with the preacher uh, out for breakfast down in uh, Florida. I took him out for breakfast, he and his wife, when he was eating breakfast. Got ready to leave, I laid a track down. He said, he told the waiter, he said, you can't go there. <laughs> I said, yes, you can. It, it talks about heaven. <laughs> you can go there. He was saying, hey, I've got one right here. You know, I'm just up the street. You gotta go 700 miles to get to him. <laughs> you can't go there, okay? He don't pass out a track. He don't carry one. He don't want. <clears throat> he doesn't know how to teach. He never. He never really becomes actively involved in the church. Fellowship time. He ain't around. He ain't around. See, the fellowship we have here is just heaven 101, y'all. Whatever we're doing right here tonight is heaven 101. We're we're getting ready to fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ throughout eternity. And what a feast that's going to be. What a time that's going to be. What about this? He's dependent. Not like you're thinking. He has to have the preacher spoon feed him. The carnal Christian is totally dependent on others for any spiritual nourishment he gets. Again, he don't get in here and feed on it. He don't get in here and feed on it. He doesn't get in here and read this. And 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 and, and this, I heard it preached just recently, that's a mirror. That's a mirror. Thank you, preacher. That's a mirror. And when you look into it, many times you go, woo, I don't like that. I don't like that. Over here somewhere. See, it's God speaking. Carnal man ain't gonna go there. He's saved. He's saved. He 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 can't do anything. He can't teach. He's got to be taught. He's got to be taught. He can't serve. He must be served. That's what he's looking for. A lot of people come in here to get, to get, to get. They don't want to give nothing. They just come to get. They come to get. They try to get all they can get. Okay? That's what the carnal man does. He, he can't teach, but he wants somebody to teach him. He needs to be taught. He, won't, he can't serve. He wants to be served. He can't, he can't glean uh, spiritual truths for himself. Again, the pastor has to, has to spoon feed him. He's helpless, y'all. Spiritually speaking, he's a baby. He's a baby. He needs to grow up. He needs to grow up. What, what was going on here in, 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 in Corinth? What was happening here in Corinth? What, what was the troubles in Corinth? Well, let's see. 
fornication, adultery, and two women trying to beat heads against each other all the time, stirring up stuff all the time. That's just a part of it. So Paul's writing to them, telling them how to, hey, how to, how to solve this thing. The carnal Christian is always looking for a fight. He's always looking for a fight. They, they're, they're willing to, to tear the church down piece by piece. That doesn't matter to them. Their, their immaturity, that's their immaturity, that's their mind. They're easily offended and quick to defend, defend their rights. The type of person who watches very, you got to watch them very, very closely. I mentioned this just the other night. I, I, my friends, I keep them close. But my enemies or potential enemies, I keep them a lot closer. It don't take me long to figure somebody out. It may be a week or two, it may be a month or so. But I'll figure them out real fast. Because see, the Holy Spirit is saying, watch this guy. Watch this person. Keep your eye on them. Keep them close to you. Because they're going to, what's the old saying? You give them enough rope, they'll hang themselves. Okay? So you keep them close to you. So you can know who they are. Ah. Many, many, there's many, many, I hate to say it, and, and it's sad, but there's many, many carnal Christians in the church today. If you're one, please let me remind you that Jesus did not save you, not save you to be that way. He saved you to serve him. He saved you to serve him. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. What type of person are you? Like I said at the start of this, you're one of these three. You're either a natural person, you're either a spiritual person, or you're either a carnal person. I think you know what you need to do. If you're, if you're, if you're a natural person, you need to be saved. You need to get, you need to get saved. And I don't mean get saved and be a carnal Christian. I mean get saved and grow up. And keep growing. Keep growing. Grow into that spiritual person that I mentioned, the Bible mentioned just a moment ago. If you're, if you're a carnal person, you need to repent and change. You need to repent and change. Those, those are the simplest things I can tell you. If you're lost, come to Jesus. If you're spiritual already, praise God for it. If you're carnal, repent and get out of it as fast as you can get out of it. Piano's playing, the invitation's open. Maybe you know somebody like that. Maybe it'd be good for you to talk to them. We talked about that this morning. A brother, a is on the wrong track. Stepped over the boundaries that God has set. We need to help them out. We need to help these carnal and these, na these natural people out also. Or be our goal or be our challenge to want to do that. Invitations open. Altars are open. If you need, come on.